Hmm. You are live with Jess on a Tuesday. Let me set up Instagram. You guys, I'm so excited to teach this. Let me tell you why. So I was following the advice to teach what you most want to learn. And that's great and all, but that set me up for... That set me up for really wanting to um, <laughs> learn something and then teach it, basically. And so ins instead of learning something and then teaching it, I feel like I need to learn things that I know intuitively on my own. So just because it caused me to like want to record notes and want to make sure I didn't forget this piece of information and made me want to also not <laughs> fuck up, basically. I didn't want to fuck it up. And... I did fuck it up, and it was still okay, and so here I am again, because what I've learned is that consistency means you can trust me, that I will be here on Tuesdays like a professional. I am your professional book witch, and I'm here at noon on Tuesdays. I'm glad you're here to join me. So I'll get started in just a few minutes. Thank you, YouTube, for being here. I would really love if you would, would subscribe. To subscribe would be that I can get my own channel name. The things you learn about starting your own journey on YouTube is that you need 100 subscribers to get your own channel name. That's one thing. Everybody take some breath. I love breathing practices, but you definitely have to make time and space to do them, for sure. Um, that's what we're going to do here today. I never learned this from anyone, but I want to thank my teachers. My teachers, uh, Ang Namo, Guru Dev Namo. I've learned a lot from Everest Asher. She is my spiritual business mentor extraordinaire at the moment. I also want to thank my EMDR therapist, Lisa, because she reminded me a couple months ago about this breathing exercise and why scientifically it's so good for you. I'll tell you guys again in a second. I want to thank Chris, my partner, for <laughs> working so hard. Um, relationships can be tricky. You know, they're hard to navigate, but I just want to say another appreciation because without him, I could not be sitting here on this beautiful deck and talking to you guys. I want to thank my local school system because they're working really hard. Everyone's really community minded and they're putting together a lot of different resources. Like I'm surprised at how many resources people are putting together. I just, I love it. I love it. I've always been community minded. I am like, yeah, I think I even have that on my personal Instagram account still. Uh, yeah. Or it's like village mentality. Hashtag village mentality. Yeah, that's me. Trying to get back to the village, you guys. <laughs> All right. This live on Instagram is to show you, I'm already feeling it. I'm feeling it coming on. Okay. I did a lot of bodywork practices this morning already, so I am like loose and ready to go. I want to share with you the practice that I didn't have a name for. I didn't learn anywhere. It didn't, um, it just showed up. And then as I started doing it, I found out different ways of doing it. And then I zoned in on my favorite way of doing this. And that's the way that I would like to teach you guys today too. I had to give it a name, so I call it a spiral breath journey, and I have all good reasons of using those three words. Spiral because your body will be kind of like uh, moving as if orbiting around your center. Breath because there's a breathing technique that you'll lock in first before your body even moves. And then journey because it's, it's, an, it's a practice as in it's a practice in presence. Let me get a drink. Ooh, back up. Okay, 
before we talk about doing the journey itself, I want to remind you that there's some plant allies that you could use to really get into it. To get in, like grab the essence of it. Okay. Cannabis being number one. Cannabis has a way of freeing you from your judgmental self mind and it lets you just dance and get to where where we're all seemingly more equal. Cannabis is good for opening the mind, opening the body, and opening the heart. If you're not into smoking cannabis or ingesting cannabis, then you could be turned on to these two other things. So rose. Rose is a heart opener. You can drink rose tea. You can have a rose tincture. I just like to drink tea, basically. So rose tea would be a good way to open up this spiral breath journey. The other one being cacao. Cacao is higher in caffeine, so it's more of a upping type of energy, but it's also a heart opener. So cacao, rose, cannabis. Those are the medicines that I suggest for doing this sort of thing. This sort of thing being the spiral breath journey. All right, let's get started. I would love to invite everyone that's sitting here with me to learn <laughs> with me that when we inhale, we activate the nervous system. Okay, and then we hold our breath and we exhale, and that activates the parasympathetic nervous system. This is where I want to thank Lisa for reminding me about this. Okay, so the nervous system, our heart rate speed up, and we breathe in, and we gain all that external input from our environment into our body. And then when we exhale, it activates the parasympathetic nervous system, and that is amazing because you can manage your stress. Okay. So if one takes a longer exhale, the heart rate will slow down. As the heart rate slows down, you become, be, you become <laughs> more calm. You feel slower. Your tempo has eased. That can be really helpful. Thank you, Lisa, for giving me this tip. So what I want to do with that is I want to use that breathing technique where the inhale, the belly gets full, okay? The belly gets full of air. You're taking in all the external input into your body and your belly will get full. Let me back up. Okay. So when I inhale for a count, I'm so sorry. <laughs> My dog was behind me. Um, when you inhale for a count, your belly gets full of air. You expand. So we're going to inhale for four. pause, and then exhale for 11. Pause. <laughs> okay, I'm going to show you with my hand. These are all tools within a tool. So if you want to use your hands to show and count your breath, you can. So we're going to try again. If you're, if you're with me here, please engage. Don't just sit there. Breathe in for four. One, two, three, four, pause, and breathe out for 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Pause, and then breathe in for four. One, two, three, four, pause. <laughs> breathe out for 11. When you're breathing out, I found that it's really, really helpful to breathe out the air audibly through your mouth, like round lips. So you're breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. And what that does is it really pushes in your navel to your spine. So I, I started practicing this when I started Kundalini and it's really, really empowering to, to work the navel. Um, I guess, I guess the Bruja crew would would relate it to the ability to retain wealth and retain health. So, 
the navel going to the spine on that long 11 count exhale, that means everything. If you can't get there, you could start at seven. Those are just my numbers. Disclaimer. Okay, if none of this feels comfortable to you, you don't have to keep going. <laughs> like, if you don't like this at all, please don't feel like you have to finish. But if you also feel like you want to go deeper in this, just practice, okay? If you can't exhale for an 11 count, then you would want to exhale for seven and then keep going. This is going to bring you back to presence. This is going to make sure that you're working this part of your body. You're going to notice that you're going to like really drop into your body and you're going to really be one with it. I didn't mention before, I forgot to say, that this is probably best done alone away from your kids because like... When you're doing a meditation that's a moving meditation or like a walking meditation, you want to be able to practice that presence. And if you have people interrupting you or you're like really just trying to spend time with the sunset and this practice and yourself and you're really trying to maybe like work out a kink in your shoulder or maybe like your hips kind of feel like they're tight or uneven or maybe if you even have a knee problem and you want to just like drop into your body, get some time alone, I suggest to do this because those pausing moments in between the out breath, or excuse me, the in breath of four, pause, out breath of 11, pause. Those are like this liminal, this liminal place where they're, like they're absolutely not nothing. Those pauses is you rebalancing back to where you are in the present. So as you're exhaling, your body's moving. As you're inhaling, your body's moving. But those pauses get you back to center. It's almost like you've been moving and moving and moving, and then you need to collect your equilibrium to get more momentum. Um, study, study Everest or yoga to figure out what that pause and breath is. I can't remember it at a moment. I'm not an expert. <laughs> You guys, I should disclose, I'm not an expert. <laughs> Disclaimer. Okay, back to our practice. So I'm going to practice that breath again, okay? Because step one, get to a place where you can spend time doing this. Step two, start practicing the breathing. If you can't slow down your breathing to get there, then just don't try to move to step number three. That means that there's a lot of activity, a lot of tension, a lot of anxiety, a lot of worry, a lot of whatever. Just focus on the breath. Once the breath is coming to you like an ocean wave to where you're really getting into it and you're really becoming present and you can keep up with that tempo of yourself, then we'll move into the spiral part of the breath journey. The reason I call this a journey was because basically you're going into a place where you're dropping into your body. You're going to trust your body to move itself in directions that it wants to move all while you slowing down that nervous system of yours into like, feels like a trance, but I don't know like how, what a better word to use for it. It's good shit. <laughs> okay, so let's do some of the breathing. Hi, Chantil. Chantil's on the line with us, y'all. I appreciate you, sister. Okay. Uh, the reason I'm outside is because I wanted to kind of like stand up and I didn't want to do this in my book witch office because I didn't <laughs> I wanted to stand up okay so I'm going to show you how I breathe I'm going to it's hard to count for you guys and breathe for me I've already like been practicing that and um so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my hand technique to do that okay my hand's in the sun right now I didn't expect that maybe I'll use this hand all right so I'm going to start counting breathing in Pause. Pause. <sighs> I was talking a lot, so I'm taking a breath. Okay, uh, you can stand in any position. You don't even have to be standing. If you are un unable to stand, if you're elderly, if you're in a wheelchair, you can do all of these things. Just sit up as tall as you must without being uncomfortable or strained. And then you would just start with the breathing, okay? Wherever you're comfortable to rest, start with the breathing, okay? I'm going to stand 
because that's how I want to do it. I also want to show you that I sometimes use a bar because I sometimes use this thing right here. That's to keep my equilibrium because as I'm breathing, you know, and I'm going to start wanting to move. And I want to like shimmy and shake and start like moving in that spiral pattern that I was telling you. Then as that breathing continues, it's you might need something to rest on. Or you could use like the back of a chair or you could use anything. That's if you don't feel steady, like you need some support and you should have support whenever you need it. So take it. Don't refuse support. Just like they say in the yoga, you use the support blocks don't feel too proud to use support. We don't want you injured. You are not allowed to get injured following in my advice, you guys. All right, move back into the breath. Sorry, I got a little distracted because I was talking so much here, talking so much that I have to catch my own breath. Let's try again. Start breathing. Pause. In. Pause. In. Pause. Out. You guys, I can normally exhale 11 and I can't right now, <laughs> which I'm not, there's no shame or anything for, okay, I stopped counting, sorry. Um, I just wanted to say that I, maybe as well as you, is having trouble slowing down to exhale to 11. So, I'm, the sun, <laughs> hold on, beauty check, okay, here we go. Also, they're building fences right now, so we're just going to go with what we got. Okay, started breathing again. I also want to mention one more thing that I, I automatically, as soon as I dropped into that breath really well, I started to want to move. Okay, the earth moves counterclockwise, but you can move in any spiral direction that you please. So as long as like the center of you is the sun and you are a planet orbiting the center of your body, then that you're doing the right thing, okay? If you don't want to move and you need to freeze or pause in that zero moment, that's exactly what I'm going to ask you to do. So you're moving, exhale, hold, pause, arrive at where you have gotten, because you just went somewhere with that spiral, arrive to where you are, and then from there, breathe in or breathe out, whatever was next in that case, and do that in a way that actually gets you walking or forward in your journey again. So I'm just, I'm just gonna have to start doing it, you guys. Okay, here we go. So breathe, breathe out all your air. Breathe in. Pause. Breathe out. Breathe in. Pause, breathe out. Pause, breathe in. Pause, breathe out. Breathe in. Pause, breathe out. Pause. <laughs> it's hard to say pause after you breathe out all your air. Breathe in. Sorry if I'm messing you guys up. <laughs> breathe out. So I'm going to continue this, okay? I'm like checking to make sure you guys can still see me. I'm going to continue this, but now I'm going to start adding in my spiral movement. It really does take some focus. <laughs> Being on video is the opposite of what normally makes me focus. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. I'm going to start again. 
by breathing out all my air first and then counting with the breath in. So. I just realized what it was, was holding up my hand and counting and trying not to mess up for you guys that you are following. Okay, so make sure when you're exhaling all of your air that your navel goes into your spine. And when you're breathing in, your belly gets really big and round. And then if you're in a chair and you're unable, say you're unable or unwanting to, to do the bottom half of your body, okay? So, <clears throat> you would start by spiraling your body. You can choose any direction. You can go for any duration of time. It's just make sure that you're really trying to reach, like pretend there was a circle all the way around you. And slowly as you wanted to, with your breath, you move to those places that might feel tight. And when you have to pause, because you're in that one of those pause moments where you're gonna do an inhale or an exhale, the opposite, just stay right there. You don't have to um, make it hurt, you know? It's not supposed to be miserable and not supposed to be really uncomfortable. It's just you kind of lean into those areas that your body is already tight. And that's how your body kind of moves it around. And you don't try not to think because the more you think whether you're doing it right or not, the worse. It should become kind of like an ecstatic dance if you're more experienced in like the whole kind of ecstatic dance thing, but it has a format, the spiral breath journey. And you can get deeper and deeper and deeper into it as long as you just keep that breath because that keeps your presence and then follow your body. So say you don't, you can't or on, um, you're unable to or you don't want to move the chest. So what if you were just doing the breath counts and then you around your neck? I mean, I have always have tension around my neck and my shoulders, especially my right shoulder, who I feel like sometimes it's like too forward and sometimes it's too far back. And like, I don't know how it sits on my ribs. And then sometimes rib work is important to get my shoulder back in place. It's all connected. I really believe it's 100% all connected. Like your big toe is connected to your shoulder. Like fascia, I'm not a fascia expert. Just research the fascia layer of our bodies. It's absolutely amazing. <laughs> maybe you'll maybe you'll agree. Okay, so I really feel like this is tuning in to that fascial type like layer that is in our skin and like moving those areas and like pulling that gently until you find the right alignment for your spine, for your bodies, for your tissues. And it doesn't really matter how you move. Sometimes you don't even if the sh if a spiral isn't good for you, try a shimmy. Try up, down. Try a uh, maybe your spiral doesn't have to go in a horizontal way; you can go in a vertical way. So you know you could do these kind of like ro shoulder rolls that everyone's used to. But have you ever tried shoulder rolling in a horizontal way? <laughs> All doing this while you're um, really tuning into your breath, which is making you a shoulder. <laughs> See, it's like getting into position right now. Okay, we're good. So it's it's no wrong movement because as soon as you do something that you feel like you should be doing with this movement, stop because I feel like you might injure yourself. Don't do it. In my Instagram stories, I was calling this uh, like a, your own inner chiropractor. I'm not saying this is a substitute for chiropractic, like professionally work. I just think it's a way to tune into your body and I'm amazed at how many like tight places or kinks or maybe like uh, like joints and um, just like muscle muscle pains and tightnesses that I can move and really like integrate into the body by just spending time with the body, um, breathing with the body, being very very present with that breath that breath pattern that we just learned, and then kind of like moving that pain in a way 
that isn't so painful. It's almost like getting to know that pain and then being like, hey, let's hang out. And then all of a sudden the pain is like, thanks for noticing me. And then moves away. <laughs> like, Not that it won't show up later. Not that you don't have to still work on it. Not that it's not a um, chronic pain. Because I understand that chronic pain is nothing like to fucking scoff at. That's awful. But I feel like a lot of pain is could be resistance. And for, for, for cases that aren't so like, clinical. I hope I'm saying that. Please let me say this right. Um, a lot of pain is, it could be avoiding just going into that part of the body and spending time with it. And yeah, you got to put time aside to do a spiral breath journey. But I mean, what, what are your priorities? Do you want to be, do you want to be one with your body or do you want to be an adversary of your body? I've been in both shoes. I've been in both, both places. And, um, I'd much rather be my body's friend and steward than be the enemy of my body and be like, I'm like such a mean parent to my body. I don't know if you guys can relate at all, but I'm like, you're not doing the right thing. Can't you try harder? Like <laughs> I'm such a mean mom to my body. It's so awful. I'm like, why aren't you different? <laughs> like, I'm, it's just not, your body's not different. You got the one you got. And the more you befriend your body and spend time with your body with any practice that is like really present based and like dropped into your physical thing, I feel like you can say, fuck what everyone else thinks about my body. Me and my body are fucking cool. Like me and my body are tight. Like me and my body are like on this road together. Like my body's my best friend. You get, you get there, you guys. I, it's, it's hard to get there when you don't see it that way. And trust me, I have teenagers who like have all kinds of body <laughs> things to complain about. I'm like, stop it. Your body is beautiful. Uh, stop. <laughs> your body's so great. <laughs> it's your best friend. They're like, melting my face, mom. <sighs> okay. So I just want to show you what it looks like for me to do it. It was hard for me to count. And I feel like I should show up on camera this way. So I'm going to stand myself up. I hope I got across that this is accessible to everyone. You don't have to have a lot of space. You don't have to have a pretty deck like I do. You don't have to have legs that work. Just try to drop into that long exhale and short inhale and drink something. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm thirsty. Mm. Yes, um unsweetened tea, just like black, good tea, it's so delicious. All right, you don't have to have a lot of space, you just need to get some alone time. I hope that you can do this in quarantine, I hope that you can do this outside in the middle of a flowery field, that would make me so happy. I hope you can do this at sunrise and sunset, because man, those are my favorite times to do this. And I, if you want, bring in music, as long as you can, like, listen to the music and count. And if you get lost, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, if you haven't counted in, like, 20 minutes and you're like, oh, shit, <laughs> like, no fault. This, you're still with your body and you're hanging out and you're giving yourself the time you need to process shit. Like, uh, all the things are stored in our cells. And let's just get back to the practice. I don't want to go on a tangent. All right, let's go. I'm going to breathe, but I'm not going to count. And maybe I'll turn to the side because it is one of my favorite ways to do this. Maybe I won't. Okay. So I'm going to exhale all my air. I'm going to trust my body that it knows where to go and knows what to do. If I'm standing still, I'm doing the right thing. If I'm moving, I'm doing the right thing. Everything is fine. I'm just here to check in with the body, to be present with my breath, like, like in amazing, amazing, wonderful ways. I'm here to trust I'm here to trust that there's going to be another breath after that 11 count. That was harder for me too. We can trust that if we exhale out all of our air and our, our navels are pointed all the way back towards our spines, that we still will get another breath because we're meant to be here and we're meant to be alive right now and we're safe. So let's drop into this by exhaling all of our air.
<laughs> so once I can't do that 11 breath out breath, I, I always remind myself to slow it down because, you know, I'm like really into the movement and I like want to start dancing and things of that nature come. And um, it's really important for me to keep, sh to make sure I can keep that breath steady. So I want to kind of exaggerate and say that to you too. So let's see, I'm at 32 minutes. I'm going to do this for another two minutes or so. And I want to invite anyone on Instagram. Hi, Instagram. Um, anyone on Instagram to ask me questions. So I'm going to keep doing it a little bit, a little bit longer. I have no idea what I look like. I've never recorded this and I've never told anyone or had to articulate this, but I like this so much better than teaching what I want to learn. You guys. Thank you. Chantil says, thank you for teaching us. I love this. Thank you, sister. Yeah, you know, she's in the Bruja Report crew. We're all Brujas together. If you want to know what that is, it's in my link tree and my link in the bio. It's a witchy, wonderful sisterhood support group where we all can be ourselves, not be judged, and also be wedgie. <laughs> I'm like, be ourselves, wedgie. Okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Brujas. Hashtag Brujas. Okay. I'm going to do it a little bit longer. I hope you guys can see that I get wild and wacky and that I do shimmies and do all kinds of crazy stuff. So it's not just like orbiting the sun. It's just whatever my body wants to lean into. And sometimes I get like, like I'm doing the weird Mr. Roboto, but like the mom version. <laughs> okay, here we go. So I'm going to breathe all my air out. Um... If you get lightheaded, please hold on to something. Do not, you're not allowed to injure yourself while doing this. <laughs> if you caught, if you caught me earlier, it's because I got a little lightheaded. Okay. I also practice standing up on my toes a lot. I crack my body a whole lot and it feels amazing. <laughs> really use this to rise or to lower. And remember how important that break in between, even after you've exhaled all of your air and you're at 11. <laughs> try your best to like gap capture that but capture a bubble is what my kindergarten teacher says <laughs> just capture a bubble thanks bethany and uh you just hold it in your breath <laughs> and then you're safe to inhale and it's gonna be a big probably like let it be big inhale of four so it's like whoo i needed that breath you know if you get dizzy hold on to something or have something there that you can hold on to and i think that is it okay so hi missy Chantiel says, I have a bulging disc in my lower back. I bet doing this would teach me a few things. Hell yeah. I think that if you know you have an injury, for sure you'd be more gentle on yourself. So small movements. It doesn't have to be like a wide orbit, you know? You're not doing like crazy big stuff. <laughs> so you're just 
just little subtle movements. If, if Even if it looks like you're not, don't think about what you look on the outside, but even if it just looks like, <laughs> and as long as you're talking to that part of your body where that tense intensity, um, that tense, I don't know what a bulging disc feels like. I'm not going to pretend to, you know, <laughs> um, yeah, just be gentle. I don't want to, I don't want anyone to get hurt. I just want everyone to, to know that we can self-source. I guess that's my goal. My goal is to know, for everyone to know that we can self-source our own um, healing. We just have to be informed. We have to share knowledge so we all can try new things. Because not all tools work for everybody. Not all people speak to everybody. So the more tools and things that, and ways that we can say, this helped me, let me share it with you then the more people we're going to be able to help because then we empower people to use those tools, especially reliability tools, you know, because anything that keeps you from going to something else for your needs, it's pretty empowering on its own too. You guys hear me? <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. I want to thank everyone for being here. I really, really appreciate it. It was nice being outside. Now I know that the sun is going to hit right on my time <laughs> here, which is cool. And, uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. My business. Hi, I'm your book witch. I'm Jess. And after this practice, a wonderful thing that you could do was journal because just like a dream state that you're going and you're, um, you sleep kind of unconsciously. In the same way, the spiral breath journey is going to bring you to a state where your body is, is speaking with you, but it doesn't really use language. So, I mean, maybe not, maybe this isn't universal, but for me, it doesn't use language as much as it uses like feeling, emotion, and image. So sometimes after that, I'll like get interesting images of like past, future, present like understandings that I want to remember or maybe I got like a book or a resource that I got when I was doing that and I want to check it out and writing is a wonderful way to do that so after you close your breath journey you could sit down and just breathe for a little while or whatever feels good savasana whatever feels good to you then you could practice journaling and that way you can record and look back and look back on all the places that you've been and all the things that you've learned. And that's really fun to do. So if you would like to make a book with me, I'm doing online consultations. It's three meetings in which we will build the most unique journal to you in the present moment that you've ever seen. It will be fantastical. The meetings are 30 minutes, 20 minutes, and 20 minutes long, and it includes, the price is $74, and it includes shipping to you and your own large hardcover journal, plus they're recycled for earth lovers. They use tree-free paper and kitchen waste paperboard. They're fantastic, and they're beautiful. I have not built my website yet, you guys, but it's in the works. For now, I'm just keeping myself sane by spiraling it out. And I hope that I have helped you as well. And I'll see you on next Tuesday. Next Tuesday is still up for vote on Instagram on Wednesday tomorrow. I do these every Tuesday at noon on Instagram. Come join me. I would love if you followed me. And adios, my friends. I'll see you next week.